噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔。Oh, what a night! Late December, back in '63. What a very special time for me. As I remember, what a night. Some good, good Jersey Cats right there. Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Some good Jersey Cats right there. But we're not talking about Jersey. We're talking about Brooklyn. Brooklyn's in the house. Listen, I recently discovered a precious little gem of a TV show going through my Amazon feed. It's called Graves End. It's called Graves End. Produced by and starring William DeMeo. William DeMeo. You may remember him in movies like A Bronx Tale. Analyze that. Gotti, Sopranos, Once Upon a Time in Brooklyn. Well, he's got a show that he wrote. He directed and he stars in called Graves End. It's a series, only two seasons in at this time, about a Brooklyn Italian crime family in the 80s from a part of Brooklyn called Gravesend. It's mafioso. It's this thing of ours. It's, I got two things, my word and my balls, and I don't break them for nobody. It's La Cosa Nostra. It's all of that. I got to be honest, I hadn't seen a mafia movie or show in some years. I hadn't seen one. First of all, let me introduce myself. I am your humble. And most gracious host, real. This episode is brought to you by Jack Daniels and Coke. Diet Coke, because I'm old. You know what I'm saying? Old school. I love mafia movies. The Godfather. Remember The Last Dawn? Remember The Last Dawn miniseries with Kirstie Alley? That was my joint. Sopranos. Enough respect for Lily Hammer. <laughs> I love Lily Hammer. I mean, it was Mafia Light, but it was still Sill from Sopranos, though. I mean, hey, forget about it. Casino, Goodfellas, all, all the big ones. And some of the lesser known ones. I dig them, I love them. Hadn't seen a mafioso movie in a minute. So when I saw it, I put it in my Amazon feed. I queued it up. Gave it a go. First season was from 2020. Only had four episodes. Very independent stuff. I mean, when you looked at it visually, it looked independent. No diss to the movie. No diss to the show. It didn't have the Hollywood budget. Didn't have the Hollywood sound. It looked independent, but I dug it. I feel like that added to its appeal. I mean, I love this show. This show has cult classic written all over it. Since it only had four episodes and came out in 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic, I figured it was because the pandemic had hit. Maybe this show was a pilot, like a a, a tester. See how people reacted. Second season came three years later. This year, summer of 2023. 
nine episodes. So I'm sure fans of the first season were happy to see it back three years later. I'm assuming it was out and available in 2020. I hadn't seen it. So maybe they just put all the seasons out this year. But first season was 2020, four episodes. Second season, 2023, nine episodes. Let me tell you when that eighth episode of the second season hit. I knew that on that next episode, on the finale, I would be anticipating this show's return for another season. I was and I am. The way I would anticipate any of my other favorite returning shows. First of all, the storylines are well written. It didn't need all that unnecessary BS like throwing the N-word around a million times unnecessarily. You know, the show was real racist light. Still pulled off a banger of a show. Now, of course, there can be racial elements in shows, especially where cultures mix and clash. I get it, of course. But there's a respectable, decent way to pull it off. I don't think this show focused on any of that. This show didn't pull it off, didn't try to pull it off. It just didn't focus on any of that. Instead, it focused on the crime. That's what we're here for. Instead, it focused on the culture. The Italian culture. That's what we're here for. Instead, it focused on New York City in the 80s. That's what we're here for. The show focused on how its Italian heritage and its mafioso culture was the sh. Love it or leave it. Next element of the show I really dug. I really dug. The 80s music. Oh, this was all New York. Hip hop, house, club. The music in this series throughout every episode took me back. As an upstate New Yorker in the early 80s to a North Jerseyan in the mid to late 80s, I got and I dug this music. The nostalgia here was incredible. Took me back to either USA skating ring down in Edison, New Jersey. Or to a house party in Plainfield. Or just out in the street running around Newark or Roselle or somewhere out on Route 22. Just took me back. You got to have music in a show or a movie to highlight a mood. A period. A moment. This series super delivered. Let me break down some of the music we heard. You heard joints like Play at Your Own Risk by Planet Patrol. Play at your own risk, own risk. You had Love Letter by Giggles. I ain't even going to try to sing Love Letter. <laughs> love, Love Letter. Silent Morning by Noel. Silent Morning. I hated that song back in the day, but now I love it. It's nostalgia all day. You had that good. Set it off, I suggest y'all. Set it off, I suggest y'all. Set it off. Set, set, set it off. Y'all want this party started, right? Y'all want this party started quickly, right? Don't know how many house parties I tore up in North Jersey to set it off, but they played it. One of my favorites by Nocera. Take 
me, take me to the water, summertime, summertime. Oh, oh, they were banging. They were banging that good 80s music. I think I even heard some Debbie Deb up in that piece. When I hear music after the end. Yo, they had all the joints. And of course, they had that good, good, super old school, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Oh, what a night. When I heard that joint, I almost fell out. I was like, oh, I love, I super love this show. Yeah, yeah. Just some good old school music. If you grew up in the 80s and lived in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area, you know what I'm talking about. The 80s music flashbacks were on point. Music director was on their stuff. The icing on the cake. The actors and actresses. Oh, my God. Looked like half of Sopranos was up in this piece. The question was, who wasn't in this show? The question wasn't, who was in the show? The question was, who wasn't in this show? You had Chuck Zito, Vincent Pastore, Big from Sopranos, Joseph D'Onofrio, Louis Lombardi, Chris Tardio, Mario Cantone, Gina Gershon, Chaz Palminteri. You had Armand Asante up in here. Tony Darrow. Some unexpected surprises for sure. For sure. Andrew Dice Clay. I, I ain't even recognize Andrew Dice Clay up in here, but. Fran Drescher. William Forsyth. Like, I could see this show get a good five seasons or so. I dig it. I dug it. If you're looking for New York Italian culture, especially from the 80s, this show gets the job done. If you're looking for that 80s New York scene in reference, this show gets the job done. You got wise guys, rats. Fishes, rats sleeping with fishes. <laughs> you got all of that. Rules, codes. You got all of that. This show delivers. For sure. Shouts out to that whole cast. William DeMeo. Graves in. Go check it out, y'all. Looking forward to season three. Peace.